Hi, my name is Mark Chandler with the Kentucky Injury Prevention and Research Center, and I have a few questions for you regarding your business's profits and losses. My guess is you know where the profits and losses are in your company. My question is, have you ever considered investing in safety? Do you have a safety management system for your company? If not, could it be because you think that safety actually costs your company money or that it takes too much time away from getting work done? Maybe you're not sure where to begin a safety management system and you keep putting it on the back burner. Whatever the reason, it's important to be aware that a lack of safety directly affects your workers' compensation insurance and reflects the number of injuries that your employees incur. Before we begin, I'm going to tell you a true story about a father and a son who owned a cleaning company. They had a contract with a very large company that had several locations throughout Kentucky and they were making $5 million a year. The safety director for the large company kept telling the father and son that they needed to institute a safety management system, but being very busy, the father and son kept putting it off. Then one day, a cleaning company employee tragically fell at work and died. Naturally, as a result of this incident, the large company canceled the contract with the cleaning company. Not only did they lose the contract, but they also lost the other smaller contracts as well and the cleaning company almost went bankrupt. It took the cleaning company a total of five years to even begin to regain the financial losses due to the fatality. However, this time when they regrouped and began again, they made certain that they started off with a safety management system in place. Why, you might ask, are we concerned about occupational injuries and deaths? Mainly because Kentucky's injury and illness rate is higher than the national rate. A driving force behind this is a lack of adequate safety programs and initiatives at the employer level. This means more injury and more costs for the employer. According to the Kentucky Fatality Assessment, Control, and Evaluation Program, in 2012, motor vehicle crashes were the number one incident type of occupational deaths. Closely behind were struck by, falls, and agricultural machine injuries, which are all injury types that can be prevented with appropriate safety programs. Further data suggests that in 2012, transportation, construction, and management were the three most dangerous occupations in Kentucky. Injuries in these industries undoubtedly caused a staggering amount of financial burden to employers. So, what exactly makes your business tick? Here are two questions that every business owner contemplates all the time. What makes my company profitable, and how can I increase those profits? Additionally, what are your expenses, and how can they be reduced? Do you worry whether an injury could possibly become your biggest expense? Do you know what an injury and all of its components cost? When thinking about the cost of an injury, you have to break it down. Every injury has two main components, direct costs and indirect costs. Direct costs are usually expenses such as ambulance and emergency room bills, doctor bills, and pharmacy bills. Indirect costs go on for a long time after the injury occurs. They include lost time, hiring, training, administration time, overtime, higher insurance rates, higher worker comp rates, OSHA fines, incident investigation costs, attorney fees, and the list goes on and on. As you can imagine, these expenses pile up and are often much greater than the direct costs. What do you think an injury is going to cost you if and when it does happen? How are you going to pay for it? Out of your own pocket? Make an insurance claim? While you're considering this, you should realize the fact that the average injury costs around $190,000. $152,000 alone of that is the indirect cost. That's pretty expensive. How much are you going to have to make to recover the loss of $190,000? Well, that all really depends on your profit margin. Or, how much of a return you're getting on your investment. For example, let's say your business makes $5 million a year with a 5% profit margin, giving you a $250,000 annual profit. One of your employees, Rick, cuts his hand requiring an emergency room visit, stitches, and time off. Direct and indirect costs of Rick's injury add up to $154,000, which is almost 62% of your annual profit. With a profit margin of 5%, your business will have to make over $3 million to replace the $154,000. Here's a chart that does the math of injury costs of how much extra revenue you'll have to generate to recoup financial losses from an injury. As you can see, the amount of revenue that is needed to cover losses can reach staggering amounts. Depending on how much the injury costs you, it can take many years before you actually recover from these losses. Now you have to ask yourself, how are you going to pay for the injury? Out of pocket? Maybe with insurance? 
One way is to not have the injury in the first place. Or you can pay for it with the reduced cost in your workers' compensation insurance. Or you can pay for the injury with the profits that are hiding in your company. And how can we do this, you might wonder. Well, for example, did you know that workers' compensation is a great place to decrease expenses and increase profits? Here's how. The National Council on Compensation Insurance has 600 worker classifications and compares companies' premium costs with the same injury risk. They collect this data from insurance companies for each state. They then use this data to create the experience rate for each job classification for each state. Data from the previous five years are used to formulate the experience rate. Your workers' comp premium has three components, the base rate, the manual rate, and the experience rate that we just mentioned. Your base rate is the loss cost from the NCCI and the insurance company's cost. Your manual rate is your business classification multiplied by your company payroll divided by 100. Your experience rate is where a safety management system can really save and make you money. The rate is based on the company's losses over a three-year period, excluding the previous year. For instance, your 2014 rate is based on the losses incurred in 2012, 2011, and 2010. It's compared to the average risk within your company's classification, and it's based upon the number of injuries your company has incurred. So, reducing the number of injuries within your company effectively reduces your company's experience rate. That means that you increase your company's profit by reducing losses from avoidable injuries. Let's look at an example. When a company is first started, WC rates the company with an experience rate of 1. From there, your experience rate will either go up or down, and you obviously want it to go down. In this example, between two construction companies, everything is the same except for the experience rate. Due to the fact that they have very few injuries, the do-it-right company's experience rate is 0.85, making their mod rate $85,000. Compare this to the Never There company who often has injuries and you'll see that their experience rate is 1.15, making their mod rate much greater at $115,000. This is a difference of $30,000 waiting to go into your bank account. Sounds like quite a bit of savings, right? But wait, that's not all. It's important to remember that most states will offer what is referred to as a scheduled credit. These types of credits can be applied when a company shows that it is making efforts to reduce injuries on the job site. For instance, your company may qualify for a reduction if you have safety programs, active drug screening, active employee training, and a selective hiring process. However, it's important to remember that the opposite of this is also true. Not demonstrating these qualities in some states can actually lead to a workers' compensation consultant increasing your premiums, and no one wants that. So, even if your company already has a history of few or even no injuries, you're still almost always better off to invest in a safety program. Also, here's a few things to check and note about your workers' comp. Check your codes on your policy and ensure that they are correct. Remember, the experience rate follows you for three years. Companies buy insurance for severity. Insurance data shows that companies that have frequent injuries have more severe injuries. Also, while the employers have the responsibility to provide a safe working environment, it's important to remember that the responsibility for safety is not just on the employer, but on the employee as well. Employees must meet employers halfway by following the company's safety rules. Safety systems keep your employees coming back to work every day, reduces our workers' comp premiums, helps reduce insurance rates, help avoid OSHA fines, and reduce turnover. What does a safety system cost to implement, you may be wondering. Your insurance carrier probably already has one for free, or you can download a program from the internet for approximately $300, a tailor program for less than $2,000, and consultants generally charge up to $200 per hour. Just make sure that the safety system you select is applicable for your company and the tasks that your employees carry out. Okay, so now you have an idea of the cost. Now, where can I find more information on the safety systems, you might ask. For starters, the Kentucky Labor Cabinet can help you put together a safety system for free of charge, and OSHA has a website that has guidance for starting a safety system. Don't forget to consult with your insurance agent as well. They can let you know if there is an applicable safety program that may fit the specific needs of your company. There's even an easy-to-read book entitled Chomp Comp by Barry S. Spurlock, which you can purchase online, that tells you what's important in implementing a safety system. And lastly, don't forget to look online for other various resources as well. A quick Google search can provide you with a wealth of knowledge of various safety programs and systems that may be well-suited for your business. 
Some elements that you might have in your safety system are, number one, an emergency response program, which every company should have, number two, a bloodborne pathogens program, number three, safety training, number four, safety equipment and how to use it, and number five, documentation of training, which is very important. And last, but certainly not least, you may also have elements such as fall protection and trench safety. What are some of the cost benefits of a safety system? For starters, safety systems reduce employee turnover by up to 48%. It also provides a more positive work environment. Workers make fewer mistakes when they are not worried about their personal safety and work more efficiently. This saves your company money and makes your employees more productive. It also saves you time. A worker has the ability to be much more productive if they feel they are working in a safer environment and are equipped with proper safety knowledge. In fact, companies have proven that when a safety system is in place, worker productivity increases by up to 25%. How about other savings? Well, indemnity and medical costs are both expensive. Returning your injured employee to work on a limited work schedule is less expensive than having that employee stay away full time. And lastly, litigation can be extremely expensive and time consuming. Having an injury prevention in place and avoiding such incidents to begin with makes much more sense. Having a safety system in place also provides a considerable return on investment. Companies that have implemented safety systems report that they make three to five dollars for every one dollar that they spend on a safety program. Remember, practicing safety is a matter of being conscious of safety. With the right safety systems in place, you can teach your employees safety culture and to be more mindful of the dangers of their everyday work. In truth, all workers want to be safe. You just have to invest the time in showing them how to be safe. Trust me, your investment will pay off big time. So, in the future, if you are wondering whether safety programs are worth the investment, the answer is yes. Safety systems may take a little extra time, but they can save your company a whole lot of money. Feel free to visit our website if you would like more information and safety toolbox ideas. Thank you for your time, and please, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at the Kentucky Injury Prevention and Research Center.